call from? Ryan Service. R Ryan Service? Hello? How are you, Ryan Service? I'm good. What is that your is is Ryan Service is that your company or your name? That's my name. What are you, mm. what are you eating? What are you eating? Steak. Wow. Mm. Uh, what? Uh, how how cooked is it? It's rare. Do you like it? Yes. Mm. What, where did you cook it yourself? No. Who cooked it for you? My friend. Who, who's your friend? Noah Perry. You said your your friend's name is military, or the military cooked it for you? All right, you gotta go. All right, goodbye. Now I'm hungry. Just kidding. I had a lot of marshmallows before this. Therapy get goes on the line, taking your phone calls every night. Therapy get goes doing it right, He's teaching you how to live your life. But he's not really an expert. Call from Veronica. Veronica. Yes. Hi. How are you, Veronica? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. I'm hanging out in the subway. Oh, that sounds fun. What are you doing? Who's in the background? Who is in the background? Oh, that's my sister. Can I talk to your sister? No. Why not? She's not of age. Oh. I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you interesting? I'd like to think so. I have a... I have a very interesting career. What is your career? I am a romance ghostwriter. I have written, uh, just finished my 30th book for other people. Um, many of them New York Times bestsellers. They haven't written their work. It's me. Mm. Does it bother you that you write the work and then the other people get to take the credit? You know, at first it did, um, because I'm also a serious, like a serious author. I also have my own career, and it is not nearly as lucrative. Um, but I get to explore some really interesting things. Mm. Such as what? Um, well, <laughs> I've written just about every type of romance under the sun, um, with the exception of male pregnancy but I've done everything else um, I did not know that there were so many different types of romances oh my god there's countless there's fetishes for everything um, which when one of you them open is up... your favorite one to write <laughs> yeah. um, so for as much kink as I write I'm actually pretty vanilla mm. so it's uh, it's like a stretch for me to write these but it's interesting because when you write, you have to get into the head of somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got to get into a headspace for all of these different kinks, these different types of people. You get involved in the LGBTQ community. All of these different things where I don't necessarily fit, I've got to find a way in for lots of so different So let me things. ask you a question. I'm curious. I hope you don't find this insulting or anything. It's not meant to be. But if you've written 30 novels right and you you're writing mm -hmm. for all these high profile bestseller people why don't you just write the thing yourself instead of writing for all these people um unfortunately publishing is a lot more than just writing books like real talk the actual business side of it is really shitty my own personal books are not selling nearly as well to make the kind of money that i do writing for my current clients it's a total money grab. Mm. Now it fuel it it funds my work, so I can pay for editors, cover designers, marketing. I mean, I didn't. I don't have a business degree, so it's it's a lot of work navigating the business side of writing. Mm. But if I just write smut for other people, it's fun, and I get paid mm. to do it. 
I get paid to watch porn. I get paid to write porn. Like Does that's my job. Your own writing ever turn you on? Yes. Do you like? Hmm. Do you ever? Do you? Do you ever like? Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Do you have trouble writing for romantic genres that you personally don't find arousing, but are doing so just for the money? Yes. Um, for example, a big one um, in the industry, they call them alpha holes. It's like the whole alpha male persona. It's mm. not a thing for me at all. It's a huge turnoff. I think you look like a douche. If so, like, it's not an appealing fantasy for me, but I have written a lot of them. And while it gets easier with time, it's still, uh, my most recent project was like dragging nails across my skin trying to finish just because I found the lead male that infuriating. Mm. Do you consider like, you being aroused is like indication that your writing is good? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it may be my imagination, but if I can get turned on, someone else in their imagination surely is. I like that. That's that's how I kind of feel about, like, you know, jokes or something, you know? Like, if you're writing something and you're like, I think this is funny. If I think this is funny, then at least someone right. out there will think it's funny. You're not the only one with that sense of humor. I'm not the only one who's turned on by certain things. Like, it's a, as long as you connect with somebody, man, it's good. Well, what did you say your name was? Veronica. Well, thank you for sharing, Veronica. I, I uh, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll be reading you and not knowing it. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Thanks, Gek. You have a good night. You too. Call from... Hot dog. Hot dog. Hello, Gek. How are you? Are you interesting, hot dog? Um, I have been told I'm very interesting. Um, I think that might just be based off of how I was raised or poor decision making. Um, led to very interesting events in my life. Why did poor decision making lead you to believe that you are interesting? Um, because it has led to very interesting experiences and it has shaped how I have grown as a person. Um, I feel very desensitized to a lot of things based off of these decision making. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. Are you comfortable sharing any of these interesting events? Yeah, I can share some. Um, <clears throat> let's, let's think see. of one. Okay. Well, we'll start when I was younger. That That's like a good one. Um, so when I was younger, my upstairs neighbor, uh, she was my best friend. Um, her older sister used to sell candy. Um, she used to like to make money for, you know, whatever she made. And her sister they was like hot dog? 16. Hot dog? Yes. Normally, I ask people to get closer to the mic, but can you get a tiny bit farther from the mic? How does that sound? Or actually, give me one second. Yeah, I got you. But... We'll wait. Is that better? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, so, my friend's older sister used to sell candy, and that led to me wanting to buy candy from her older sister. Um, so, I would hustle around the neighborhood, and I was raised in a very... Um, low income neighborhood. So it was a little bit sketchy. Um, but there was a pond behind our neighborhood. And um, at the same time, I had just found my mom's condoms and, you know, other things around there. But I had stole, I had stolen a string of condoms from my mom's drawer. And uh, I put two and two together. And I was like, oh, there are guppies and frogs and fish in this pond. And I had just gone to a fair recently around that time. And I saw that they were selling goldfish and like little uh, bags and shit like that. Um, so I took those condoms. Um, I had basically done the same idea. I had taken the guppies from the pond and put them in the condoms. And I had been selling them to the kids around the neighborhood. And uh, so you were selling yeah, that was bags of fish 
but in, they were in condom bags as opposed to little fish bags. Uh, yes. Mm. Um, what were you but yeah, for? that had. Um, I just wanted to buy candy from my friend's older sister. That was basically. No, I mean, it. What, what, what was the going rate for a condom fish? Oh, it was like one dollar a bag, so not that much, and I think that was like pretty reasonable. The margins are bad. Um, oh, I guess if you stole the condoms, the margins are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I didn't know what condoms were. I was like eight or nine at this time. Um, they were colorful too, so I thought they were like, you know, some sort of balloon or something like that. So, mm. yeah, a little bit innocent, but a little bit fucked up. Um, so I guess that led to interesting decision making uh, because I found that that did work for me. I did get candy from my friend's older sister. And uh, I guess that played a little bit of a part of my life. Um, I think about that incident quite a lot. Because I do find myself doing things like that for stuff I would like. Um, but yeah. Wow. So you've been entrepreneurial for since a very young age. I have. I have. Um, recently, I have. Yourself, yes, that's what I was going to ask is what's, you know, uh, an entrepreneurial effort that you've found yourself in recently? So I do have a normal job. I work at a gas station. Um you know, that's fun and all that, and all that, but it doesn't make that much money. So I have found that Craigslist is a very fun place to do dumb shit to earn money. Um, like the other day I had sold this dude. I don't know what his interest was in these, but I sold this dude that I met on Craigslist. Um, just some fucking ear swabs, you know, like the little, uh, what are they called? Q-tips. I sold him some used Q-tips and I made about $50 off of those. Um, so I guess that would be a poor decision talking to somebody from Craigslist, but at the same time, I did profit from it. What do you think he was using? I've had very, I don't know. Um, I assume it was some sort of fetish thing for him. I don't really know. I haven't ventured into that kind of stuff. Um, I have no fucking idea. What do you think? Hmm. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. He could have put them in his own ear. Hot dog? Hot dog, are you there? Hot dog, are you gone? As mysteriously as she entered, she left. Call from... Dennis. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Oh, it's Dennis. Are you interesting, Dennis? Yeah. I what? I, uh, I wanted to uh, elaborate about the Craigslist uh, selling that the, the person b before me was talking about. Oh, please. That's like a whole, that back in the day, that was like a whole career move. That mm. was like the only fan of uh, message boards. Did you used to buy slash sell on that message board? Oh, hell yeah. Selling stuff on Craigslist was the jam back in the day. What kinds of items would you sell? Uh, it depends. Well, it depended. It was a lot of underwear, socks. Uh, I had some guy friends get in on the game, and then we would sell, like, jock straps and stuff. It was pretty amazing what people were willing to pay for. What did you observe as the highest ticket item? Well, so it really depended. It would be more, like, special requests versus like high ticket item uh, mm -hmm. it would be like uh, wear a pair of wear the same pair of underwear and exercise on a treadmill for X amount of time and then take the pair of underwear put it into one of those like zip sealed air zip sealed things you know like you would do like a salmon or whatever you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about right you, you then, vacuum seal it yeah vacuum seal it and then you send it to them. But then, like, now, the special request was where the no, real I'm money... I'm sorry, go ahead. The special request was where the real money came in. But how could they verify that you actually completed the request? I mean, 
it's pretty easy to tell whether, well, first of all, they would get something in the mail. And then second of all, I think it's pretty easy to tell the difference between like a clean pair of underwear versus like exercised in for a week straight underwear. I'd like to, I think it's funny to imagine that these guys, like they can smell the difference between underwear that was used on a treadmill for 10 minutes as opposed to 12 minutes. There were uh, there were people that used to try and run a scam on on us because uh, we, we it was like a group of us that would do it, and the scam would be like, uh, I want you to send me proof that you actually wore X Y and Z while you did X Y and Z, so that mm-hmm. in the hopes that they could get a picture of somebody like wearing the jock strap or the socks or whatever, uh, and that would be their way of like you know. Then they would never, if they, if we sent them that, that they would never call back or they would never buy anything. That was their way of trying to like scam picks and stuff. Well, so Dennis, look, before, before we move on, uh, you know, you were calling in as a follow up. Do you have any other idea as to what that earwax? I get the, uh, like I said, I understand the underwear and the jock strap and the socks, but the, the Q tip. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, it's again just some weird fetish thing. Someone once paid me five hundred dollars to uh, take a to record a video of me stepping on a printer in a high heel shoe and stomping on it until it broke, and then I mailed them the DVD with that on it. A DVD. Yeah, it was, it was a long time ago. And he re- not only did he replace uh, the printer, but he also paid me 500 bucks. Oh, so he also replaced the printer? Because it was your printer? Yeah, it was my personal printer. Was it a nice printer? Yeah, it was one of the ones that was the scanner-printer combo. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Dennis. I appreciate you calling in. Yeah, of course. You have a good rest of the night. All right. Talk to you later. All from... And let's go with Q. Did you say let's go with Q? Yeah. It's a letter, like, between A and Z. Just shows a random one. You were you were way more. Um, the last two people that picked up the phone, they had they were like bl- blown away that they got on, and I like that you you um, you like answered me so immediately that you you were that was a very confident. You had like the heart of the cards there. Oh, sweet. So I am a good bluffer. You're what? A good bluffer. <laughs> Um, eh, never mind. Well, I'm look, there's awkward. there's no there's no way to be good at this. This is not a job. There's no job to do, so you can't do a good job. But that also means you can't do a bad job. Are you interesting, Q? Um, that's not I a like to... that's not a Q Anon thing, is it? No, no. I just I completely forgot about that. Actually, I probably should have chose between one and twenty-five of the letters. Are you interesting, um, Q? Um, I like to think so. Um, I mean, high school, I did. Kind of ride a scooter between classes. You rode a scoot. How old are you? Um, right now I'm 19. You rode a scooter to in between classes, like you well, th- rode a, a scooter, razor scooter down the hallway of your high school from Spanish. Oh, no, to no, no, no. It wasn't in the school. Like my school had a very outdoorish campus. It's like it was built in the 50s. So instead of you know making a new campus in like 2020. They just kept building onto it. So, like, there's different buildings all outside, and it's like a half-mile-wide campus. So it was hard to get around to, um, to like, one into the other within uh, five minutes, I believe it was. So I just kind of rode scooter between classes. I even got the administration on my side. Was this a common thing? Was this, or was it mainly, were you the scooter guy? Or was everyone no, I was doing scooters? No, scooter boy. Wow. So the what do you mean by the administration was on your side? Was there a big war between scooter and no scooter? 
No, I'm, <laughs> no. There might have been everyone against me and my friends. But what happened Do was, you think uh, it upset people that you rode a scooter? Do you think that they thought you thought you were better than everyone else and that made them resent you? I don't think that. Um, I did end up on the school's Instagram meme page a couple of times. Mostly it's just people like, hey, that's kind of cool or that's kind of funny. Hmm. You know, there's a thing that happens when you, in the culture of high school, some kids become memes, you know. I kind of I remember this. You know, we had a few kids that would, would become memes. Uh, and they get, the, there's kids in your school that sometimes when, they, when you become memeified, Q, I feel like it paints you, it turns you into like this two-dimensional portrait of all, you are the scooter kid and that is all you are. Do you, did you ever... Feel bad? Did you ever want people to know you as more than just the scooter kid, Q? Did you ever feel bad that that, that you were locked into that? Uh, I don't think I got locked into that. Well, maybe for like the freshmen that came in, but I only started doing that the second half of high school. That's when I like became troubled to like get the class on time. So I thought, hey, scooter, that could work. Um, but I kind of know most of the people in my um, grade because I was like. I think it was, like, something in the top ten. So, like, I've known through extracurriculars and other means to that. But uh, I never really – I mean, I got called the scooter boy everywhere, but I don't think I was locked to that, per se. I think I did a good job doing other stuff to not just be the scooter boy. By the way, I want you to know, if I were on, like, the board or whatever, I totally would have voted against you being allowed to use a scooter because <laughs> – and here's why. The thing of I can't get to class on time, I need a scooter is just is that's bullshit, Q. That's such bullshit. To an you extent, realize yeah. why that you real you realize why that's bullshit, don't you? Oh yeah, no, I completely see why. Cuz if you're the only cuz everyone else can do it, why is it that you I mean, do you I mean, do you have a disability? Mhm. -mm. Get the fuck out of here. No, you, well, you can't ride a scooter around. Everyone else can get to class on time. How come you can't? How come you need the scooter? I would well, have totally voted against I, that. The original reason was, like, you know how I said my school kept building onto itself? Okay. In my junior year, they ran out of, like, space to build on, but there was this elementary school right next door. And they thought we could just move all the elementary school kids to other schools and take over that building. And that's why it really became difficult getting the class because you had one on the opposite side of campus. The, the yeah, but that side. doesn't. Yeah, but that doesn't address that doesn't address what I just said. It doesn't matter if it, everyone else was able to do it without the scooter, except for you. So why should you get to ride a scooter? I think it was more so like the teachers just didn't care if they were late because they were getting there late. <laughs> like I was. It's more so like a point that the original reason I started doing it was try to get the school to like do block scheduling instead of like seven periods at once to get more God, for I it. Would've, I would have I would have fought really hard. Like if I was like the one person in the room who voted against, I would have fought really hard <laughs> for you to but not be they, allowed to do that. But then they just said, you know what, ride the scooter, and we both kind of went. I, I would have fought hard to a point, and then I would have given up. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Yeah. Well, Q, thank you for sharing really with us. Mm -hmm. Anytime, man. Wait, there was wait. Well, there was nice. hold on. I can't, well, who was the one person that was against it? Um, there was one teacher that was like in. Um, it was a. Uh, it's my senior year, and I was going over at the end of the school day. And I was going over to like some club, but they apparently had the building on lockdown because there was like vandalism or something. And the teacher blocked me from going in and said, you can't ride the scooter on top of that and said it was an insurance violation and all that, which I figured and all that. But also, I was the kid that, uh, you know those rule books they make you read on the first day? Who was, was the, the teacher? Some Spanish teacher. Okay, that's all I need to know. <laughs> well, th <laughs> thank you for sharing, Q. I appreciate right. you. You have a good rest of the evening. You too. from Tiki Tiki Hello Hello Tiki 
Oh my god, I actually got through. You don't know well, that, Zach. This could be a voicemail. You could be yeah, in a dream. Right. You don't know that you got through. Uh, you need to be right. Never thought of it like that. How old are you? I'm 19. I actually wanted to talk to you about that because uh, all my like I recently graduated and all my friends are like doing stuff with their life, but I'm you know still living with my grandma in her basement, watching a gecko on stream. What well, what do you want to be doing with your life? You know, I don't know though. That's that's the actual thing, and that question I hated a lot while in high school. Like a lot of counselor, counselors were like, uh, "What do you want to do with your life and stuff?" And I I don't know. Even now I don't know. While graduated. Uh, great. You graduated from high school, or co are you are you in college? No, I'm not. Well, uh, some do you people. Do? What do I do right now? I work at Taco Bell. I just fuck yeah. Yeah, I don't know look, what work, I want to do. Work it, look, there's pride in working at Taco Bell. Don't think there's not. Because I fucking love what? Taco Bell. And if people didn't work there, I couldn't eat there. Thank you for actually saying that. Because my friends make fun of me for working at Taco Bell. Fuck, fuck your friends. Fuck your friends. Do your, fucking, do your friends eat Taco Bell? They do, actually. Fuck them. You know, thinking about look. that, my friends are dickheads. That pisses me off, dude. You can't... But as you, to eat at Taco Bell, you need people to work there. You're right about that. And me working now at a, you know, a deadbeat job makes me appreciate other people who work there. Oh, yeah. And it hurts me a little bit because I have my mom who's very rude to, like, like that. It's like, you mess up an order or something mm -hmm. like that. She's very rude to people like that. And I'll mess up an order sometimes. When people mm. are rude to me, it kind of hurts my feelings. Mm. Have you tried to... So it's given you... I've, yeah, I've heard that a lot You know, from people who, who work in like the service industry. So it's given you a better um, uh, perspective on you know uh, uh, other people that you encounter as a civilian who work in that industry. Yeah, it does. Like, uh, I have a friend who is a waiter and a busboy. And before, you know actually me talking to him i didn't really tip that often or tip that much but now i make sure i tip you know as much as i can because i understand Word. you know what you're going through and what you need don't let don't let your friends give you shit for working a taco well what do they i don't even i don't even want to hear what they do because i don't think it's good to compare yourself to other people we're we're we're, we're talking about you right now <clears throat> nah dude i love taco man do you get a discount? Do you eat the stuff, or do, or after seeing how it's made, you're 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 good? I used to like I'd say for the first week I ate a lot of Taco Bell, but I gradually stopped eating it. It's just I think it kind of makes me sick if I eat a lot of it. I just eating Taco Bell every day. So do you have do you have aspirations uh, outside of Taco Bell? I know you hate this question. But when people when people uh, put you in the corner and ask you to answer it, what do you what do you usually come out with? Um, I normally tell them like my family kind of has this path laid out for me, but I, I, I guess in my rebellious stage where I kind of don't want to take that path. But the path is like my uncle is a truck driver and he got a CDL and all that, and that's kind of the path they want me to take is get my CDL and become a truck driver. But it's like. Is that that's not my choice? That's the choice they're pushing on to me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, a sh sometimes a uh, uh, not to say the Taco Bell's a shitty choice, but like in general, sometimes a, sh a a shitty choice is almost better than a because it's your a shitty choice that is yours is almost better than a good choice that's someone else's. Yeah, yeah, you you could be right about that because I'm I am just you know like. I kind of got to say it, like, I only work at Taco Bell, I live with my grandma, I don't got to pay rent, and all that, she provides for me, so it's, like, all just well, income that's good. for Well, me. if you're not paying rent, that's good, because you can save, you save up all that money, you can use it for, you know, lots of difference than, you know, investments and shit. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to get in more of the stock market, I've been seeing a oh, lot of yeah. that. Oh yeah. Oh, we're gonna get way off topic if we start talking about this. But <laughs> is there? Do you have any? Do you have any interests outside? Like, what do you do? Like, what do you do when you're not working at Taco Bell? When I'm not working, um, I'm really into anime, but 
like I was talking to my friends about like our personalities and stuff and then they kind of mentioned like I you know all I really talk about is anime and video games and I was like you're right so I wanted to right now I'm learning magic um magic the gathering or like, or like magic 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 like Fuck trick yeah. like card tricks and shit like sick. that sick you know I think it's inter- entertaining and I don't know any like I had this one friend back in middle school where he, you know, did a lot of card tricks, and it, I thought it was cool, but, like, I realized as I get older, my friend group diminishes, like, drastically. Like, right well, now, they, I only talk to the same four people. Well, four, four people is incredible, by the way. I, ta- I, I, ta- I probably talk to, like, four people. Four people's good. Well, wait, oh, are these the same four people? Because your friends earlier, they were making fun of you for working at Taco Bell. They sounded like they sucked. Um, they Yeah, it is the same four people, but I don't see it as that because it's like, um, we, that's kind of how our friend group operates. We're like dickheads to each other. You know, sometimes it does hurt me emotionally, and I will convey that to them, and they do understand sometimes. But other times, they'll be like, oh, you're just being a pussy. You're just emotional. And so on and so forth. Oh, well, I, I, all right. Initially, I didn't want to talk about your friends, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about them real quick before we move on. But like, um, cause may, cause like maybe if you like are like jealous of certain things that your friends are doing, that could indi- that will at least cue you in onto what you might want. If that may, like, what is it that your friends are doing that you are like? Oh, they're moving on with their lives and doing cool stuff. Like, what? What is it that they're doing that you, um, you know? They, like, ah, one of them turned into a drug. You, I'm sorry. Can you most say that them, one more time? You kind of you cut out a little bit. Oh, sorry. Most of them are going into the army, and yeah, you know, they offered me to go with them, but that's also not something I want to do. That's not something I aspire to do. So uh, why are you je- so th- I mean why would you be why would you be jealous of someone doing something that you don't want to do? I wouldn't say I'm jealous. It, like I don't think I am jealous. The thing is, it's just like um, they know what they want to do. Like they they right, you know you. they want to do that. I don't know what I want to do. So it's the fact yeah, that okay, like that. they you know they have a purpose kind of. I would say a purpose in life, and I don't know what mine is. Well. I'll say a couple things, and I'm not qualified to give advice because I'm a lizard on the computer. But um, I don't know. You're so you're so fucking young too, like 19. Dude, honest, like I, I, honest to shit, like you living at your grandma's house and like working at top, just fu- like at 19, like j- do that as long. Honest, honestly, do that as long as you can. I I, I think so, right? Because if you, let's say you lived at your mom's house for like, and people might disagree with me on this, but if you just lived at your, your grandma's house for, you know, a couple years and you just fought, you just ate Taco Bell and ham sandwiches and shit, you just saved up all that money, you're going you're gonna to build a cute, you're going to build a very cute little savings account right there. And then, you know, and then you can use that to invest in stocks and shit. Like, that's kind of the moves. Like, people might shit on you for that, but like... Dude, build, building up a cute little savings account while, you know, keeping your grandma company and feeding some stoners, that's not a bad gig. I wouldn't take any shame in that. Yeah, yeah, you're, that, I do appreciate your input with that. Because I honestly never thought of it like that. Like, I just, yeah, oh, yeah, please keep get... thinking about it like that. You're, you're, sa- you're saving up, you're feeding people, you're taking care of your grandma. It's a, it's a, you gotta, for 19, that's a good, I think that's a good gig. Yeah, and it, you know, it, like the thing is too is like uh, I have a younger brother. I get compared to a lot, and he's kind of like the prodigy of the family. Like he's super smart. He does all this coding and you know cyber security stuff like that. And I get compared to him, and like they believe he's going places, and then I'm just the deadbeat of the family, and that kind of hurts me. I know. I like. I liked. Wait, you said that you were like kind of getting into stocks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get more into get like get into the shit. Get into like investments and shit. That's what I, I that's what I would do if I was in your situation. Is I would like pocket all that. Keep living with your grandma. Pocket all that money and then look at how you can invest it. I mean, don't like you know go to the casinos or put it all on fucking GameStop or something. But I like that's a good. I think that's a good strategy. Just saving up money to invest. 
You'll be you'll be ahead, especially at 19, dude. You you you're actually in a. I know you think you're in a shitty position, but at 19, you're wealthy in time and you're saving up your money. You could you could really do some shit. Don't 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 think of yourself as. I mean, fucking at 19, you know what I mean? It, I, it, yeah. Ha have some have some faith that you're doing a good thing. Thank you for that. Yeah, for I sure. actually really need to hear that. I have a lot of like. Uh... I'll, I'll guess haters, but it's like, I'll, you know, I want to know if it's haters because, like, I, they are looking out for my best interest, but the way they're going about it, you know, I want to think is the best way. What'd you say your name was? Tiki. Like a tiki, tiki. torch. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Tiki. And, um, yeah, dude, keep, keep, keep saying, I like the, I like the, I like, I like, I like the gig. Saving up the taco money to, uh, with the hopes of investing. That's what, I, that's what I'd fucking do if I, I like... I don't want to shut up about this, but... Live with your grandma. Be cool to her. Take care of her. Have a good relationship with her. Because, you know... Uh, you know, keep working at Taco Bell. Keep... Go and fucking... You, uh, watch every YouTube video about investing and shit. I swear to God, at 19, you'll... you'll you're setting yourself up good. So, so don't, uh, don't forget about it. All right, man. Thank you. Thank, for you. Thank you for talking in, man. Um, uh, best of luck to you, Kiki. All right. Thank you. I know that was long, but I'm passionate about those things. Call from. Yeah, to accept, press one. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you can you can you turn off your stream? Oh wait, yes I can. Oh yes, wait. Do that. Hi. Do that. Okay. Hello. Okay. Turn off. Tur turn off. Are you on the computer right now? Yes. Okay. Be no, nothing good ever come happens from being on the computer. Turn off the computer. There we go. That was very confusing for a moment. I'm sorry. I forgive you. Excellent. How are you tonight, Therapy Gecko? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm hanging in there. I'm doing the best You're I can. Hanging... Yeah, I'm feeling. Are good. you okay? Do I yeah, need I'm good. I've I've learned. I've learned. You know what? The, I I've something bad has happened to me this tonight. What happened? I've I've learned just... that it's a lot more fun to 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 be mean than to be nice. And I'm, I think I'm gonna yeah. start, I think I'm gonna start getting addicted to that. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna take it too far at oh. some point, and it's gonna backfire on me. It's okay. You won't hurt my feelings. But I don't want to be mean. You haven't given me any reason to want to be mean to you. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, ask me some questions. Give, and I'll I don't give you mean it. I'm not trying to actually mad. It's a. It's look. This is. It's all a bit. It's. A, I'm doing a thing here. I'm not actually. Yeah, none of these emotion. None of these emotions. They're all for theater. We've been new. We've been new. Just um. Just you know. I'll try and give you a reason to hate me. Um, don't do it. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. In, I'm not looking for it. What's your name? Uh, my name's Lauren. Lauren, have you? Lauren, are you interesting? Um, I. I'm a, as interesting as any of these fucking people on here, I guess. Okay. Uh, what's What's your? What 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 would you say is your qualification in your own terms, in your own words? For being interesting. Um, yes. I don't know. I still paint for a living. You you used to or you do? No, I currently sell paint for a living. Ah, oh, you, you, did you say you paint or you sell paint? I sell paint. Oh, okay. Uh, like at like Sherman Williams or something? Actually, I did work at a Sherman Williams. Um, I don't work at a Sherman Williams anymore. Um, I currently work at the Blue Hardware Store. Um, but I, I did work at a Sherman Williams for a time. You work at the blue hardware store. Yeah. What do you there's find interesting about the selling the, the blue one and the orange one? Oh, the Lowe's and the Home Depot. Yeah, there we go. I'm not supposed. I'm not supposed to say that until unless if they but give me money. But for legal reasons, it is yeah, so I don't get fired. What do you find interesting about selling paint? Um, I don't know. It's kind of an unusual career choice. Um, I'm a young woman, so that's kind of fun. Um, I love striking fear into the hearts of old men um, whenever I lift five because they 
think it's going to like break me in half or something. Um, so that's fun. I'm TikTok videos. A lot of people find that fascinating. There's a lot of you make paint you make videos TikTok there. videos. Like paint. I do. I know there's one kid. I know there's one kid who like was sponsored by Sherman Williams or something like that for like his like amazing paint. I know that there's a there's a whole paint niche or something like that. Oh yeah, no, there's a thing. It's it's um it's called Paint Talk. I participate in that sometimes. So you say you like to strike fear in the hearts of old men. I do. Job. And I how do. how do you how do you strike that fear? Um, honestly, just by doing my fucking job, um, and by knowing what I'm talking about, um, because they don't expect me to know that because I have a uterus. So is that is that is that frustrating for you? Yeah, I mean it can be. I mean, like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what I'm fucking talking about. I do kind of, but, you know, not really. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It can be frustrating, but I expect it. Well, I mean, you, look, you you don't need to know everything about paint. You just need to know more about paint than someone who doesn't know anything about paint. Yes, and most people know absolutely nothing. Perfect. Absolutely nothing, and it's very frustrating because they do absolutely no research whatsoever, and then get very upset whenever I try to tell them what's going on. They get, why do they get upset when you try to tell them what's going on? That's what that's what I would want. I would if I'm going to talk to the paint person, I want them to explain everything to me about paint because I don't know anything. No, they do, but some people, I don't know, they have like an ego about it. And then I go, hey, um, maybe don't paint your bathroom with flat paint. And they're like, well, why not? And they seem, you know, it's, it's the whole thing. See, I would ask you that question genu genuinely. Why not paint it with flat paint? I didn't know that was a thing. Genuinely, don't paint your bathroom with flat paint. Um, honestly, don't use flat paint for anything but the ceiling, really. Um, it's not very washable. I don't know if you've ever lived, like, you know, in my shitty apartment, um, all of the walls are flat paint. So if you need to wash them down, impossible. Um, it's also not very moisture resistant at all. So um, for a bathroom, I'd recommend a satin or a semi-gloss. So what, see, you I, you have convinced me that you know everything about paint. You per, you know more than you need to know about paint. Or I mean, it sounds like you know exactly um, as much as you need to know about paint. Yeah, it's kind of upsetting because I'm also a 20-year-old woman. <laughs> What's wrong with that? You have a s skill. You have specialized paint knowledge. But it doesn't matter the who, how old you are, or what's going on in your pants. Yeah, it is. Um, it's kind of a very niche thing to know a lot about. Well, you know enough about it to do it. And I do be doing it. I just got off. Um, we do be doing well, it. What'd you say your name was? Um, Lauren. Well, Lauren, look, I commend you for uh, your paint knowledge. I wish you the best of luck moving forward, and thank you for educating. You, pr you probably actually saved. Someone listening to this is going to not paint their bathroom with flat paint because of you. So you, you saved I'm that so person's life. That, I'm so glad that I did. Well, thank you, Lauren. You have a good rest of the night. Thank you so much. Have a lovely night. You as well. Call from... Keith with two E's. Two e's. Like one in the... One as the second letter and then one at the end? <laughs> uh, for my name, no. It's Keith, the K-E-E-T-H. Ugh. No, oh, well, thank you for that. Like teeth. We're off to a great start. Yeah, like teeth, yeah. I got a guy who calls how, me how Dr. You, teeth. Well, how did you how did you expect this to how did you want this to go? Uh usually it starts off with somebody saying, "Oh, I've never seen it done like that before." But uh normally I have to be oh, like, I meant, yeah, I meant this interaction because you were upset that I didn't like your name <laughs> and then you said, "Well, that's you sarcastically said that's a great way for this to start off." And I'm asking with all like not as like a, oh, how did you expect this to go? But, and, and, you know, it's quite serious, you know, how did you oh, expect yeah, like, this I, to go? 
on a serious note, honestly, I was still uh, I was expecting to uh, hear your voicemail saying uh, that the lines were busy. I, I wasn't expecting to go right into this, so for that, I apologize. On you know, I apologize for that. Keith with two E's, you never have to apologize to me for anything ever. But also well, that also means I don't have to apologize to you for anything ever, including making fun of your name. That's fair. Are you interesting? I would like to think so, but I would also like to ask you a question, if I may. Sure. Do you think that interesting people are born out of trauma? Um, you know, I'm not. I I I wouldn't. I I wouldn't. I'm not interested in in taking uh, the stance of romanticizing trauma. Mm as making one into an interesting person. I don't think that anyone should feel like they have to experience trauma to become interesting. It's kind of like a uh, six in one hand and uh, half a dozen on the other, right? Because you don't have to go through trauma to be interesting. But I feel like people who are interesting, I find a lot of the time, have some sort of trauma. Uh, what makes you say that? Well, possibly because where I grew up from, uh, not everybody tend everybody that I used to hang out with tend to have some shitty backstory, right? You know, and including myself. And I'm not. This isn't a sob story of myself. Honestly, what I what I'm trying to get at is the reason why I think I'm interesting is because I've been able to overcome that kind of dark cloud, or at least I like to think that at this point in my life i've uh, c taken a step out of the cloud and I've, I've acknowledged it i uh for instance ever since i left high school i joined a irish pipe and drum uh irish pipe and you know drum band i moved to uh the closest city where i'm at and i found myself a job selling cheese uh, and I also, um, you know, got a degree in information science and technology, um, all of which was stemmed from this feeling of not feeling significant and, uh, you know, not honestly knowing what I was doing with my life until uh, my like last year of college. All of a sudden I had, you know, I had so many things going on at once that I finally like broke in a way where I that self, you know, self doubt and everything kind of had to be pushed aside, you know? Mm. And I feel like being reborn in a way through that kind of crucible of like, of, of trauma, finally coming to a point where you, you overcome it to get what you have to get done. I think that has made me an interesting person. I'm not a real therapist, and I'm not here to do armchair therapy, but I, I do have a thought that I might be wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to psychoanalyze or anything, but I, I mean, the idea, like, you've done all these things, like, you know, you got your computer science degree, you turned your life around, it sounds to me, but that's, you don't, you don't have trauma to thank for that. You have, you, you, trauma didn't fucking do that. You did that. You made your life interesting, you know. I think I think the fact that like, again, I'm not a real person, uh, but I think the fact that like, you know, you did all the, the you you did that fucking the, your past being shitty didn't you create your present being good. You created your present being good. I think you should you should take and I think you should take credit for it. Oh, you know what I mean? Well, that, I, I, don't give your credit to the the shitty things that happened to you. Give the credit to to you. I would say it was more like it, it was more like weighted clothes. They didn't. I'm not saying that the trauma put me in the situation, and I have to agree with you. And this is like the first time in my life where I can take the credit. You know, like I finally have stepped away from. This being like everybody being like, oh, you should be proud of yourself for doing that. And me not feeling like I did enough, you know, because that was always my problem growing up and, you know, uh, passing high school and everything like that. I was like, I didn't feel like an accomplishment. But like, you know, 
moving to an entire new city and finishing my degree when I was flip-flopping uh, majors left and right and finally settling in on something and getting through it while working full-time, going to school full-time and everything like that. That was the deed that really pushed me to become who I am today. Like, nothing else fucking touched it than that, and that was what made me who I am. Uh, right. The trauma I mean, look, and everything. Oh, the, I, I'm uh, sorry, what, you finish? Yeah, the trauma and everything, sure. It's, you know, you aren't who you are, you know, be, because of, like, the past is the stepping stones for the steps that you take, you know, in the future, but, um, but they don't, you know, obviously they don't define you, but they define a core part, bit of you. And it takes, you know, like I said before, going through kind of like a crucible. I still, uh, and for the fifth time, I'm not a real anything, mm, but, you know, course. I still, I still, like, I, I'm still iffy on the idea of, like, you know, in any way, like, romanticizing your the you know your your crappy past in any way shape or form i mean i get i guess i guess i under i understand you and you should be you know proud of yourself for having overcame what you overcome mm. but i don't think it's i don't know if it's good to walk around you know thinking that you are who you like having you you know, being defined by the past. It doesn't sound like you are, but you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't walk around being like everything that's bad that's happened to me made me who I am. You know, you you made you who you are. Just to reiterate. No, yeah, um, I will have to probably take that a different perspective and in consideration. You know, would you, would you say your name was Keith with two E's? Well, Keith. I'm not going to take back what I said about your name because I still think that's a weird way to spell your name. But I appreciate you sharing what you shared with us this evening. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. You have a good rest of the have night. Have a good one. You as well. Call from Kira Martin. Hello? Hi. What's, what did you say your name was? Kayla Martin. <laughs> K Kayla, what year were you born? 1994. 1994. That was a great year. It was a good year, I think so. You didn't say thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks. <laughs> it's not a I wasn't expecting it, you to pick up. I wasn't expecting to you to through. call. Kayla, I have a question for yeah. you. Yes. Okay. Why? Why did I call? Um, I don't know, just to have somebody to listen, I guess. Somebody to listen? Yeah. Hmm. I don't feel like I share with people very easy, but I think I called because, like, I don't know you. <laughs> so it makes it a little easier, maybe. What, well, uh, you know, what is it that you wanted to share? If anything in particular. Um, I'm having a hard time with a few things. Um, I was on your TikTok live and I uh, said I was raised in a cult. Oh, that was, that was me. you were raised in a cult. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you two things. First of all, I'm not a real therapist. Of course. And I forget what the second thing is, but, um, okay. What are you having a hard time with? Um, so recently, I mean, like, I, it's been seven years since I left, so the triggers from that have kind of subsided, um, but I read a book recently that kind of opened my eyes to how dysfunctional my family was, just in general, mm -hmm. like, I kind of always blamed the cult for how crappy they were, but it wasn't just that, like, they were just dysfunctional on their own <laughs> how long have you been out of the cult 
I left in 2014, so about seven years in, I think, uh, August. And what are you what are you doing now? Um, now I'm not doing anything, any work because of COVID. I uh, was a massage therapist, but I'm a housewife right now, and I like it a lot, actually. A housewife? Do you do you have kids too? No. No, just a housewife to my husband. <laughs> well, uh, what do you like about being a housewife? Um, I like taking care of people because that's what I did a lot as a kid. Uh, I think so it kind of transferred. So I like like getting the house clean and making him dinner. He works really hard and um, what does he I'm do? really proud of him. He's a manager at a car wash. How did you two meet? Um, through friends. They were um, in the religion, too, but they weren't, like, super strong in it, and so they had, a, quote, uh, worldly friends, and he was one of those, like, worldly boys, and I wasn't supposed to talk to him, um, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so, okay, so they, so, so this cult, they referred to people outside of the cult as worldly. Yes. Interesting. So you weren't. I can tell so you, you the started. Ta you started talking to this person while you weren't allowed to. Yes. And what was that like? How did you? Were you talking to him online? Were you doing secret little Romeo and Juliet balcony meetups? Um, no, because they were friends of mine, and he was because I was friends with the daughter, and he was friends with the son, so. Um, we would just like be at the house at the same time and for a long time we were just like friends um, we would just hang out a lot and then like it started to develop a little bit more hmm. where did you did you have a hard time hiding this from people who would be upset if you found out yes um, it was hard because we are not supposed to have sex before marriage in the religion. Mm -hmm. um, so when I wanted to go on birth control, I had to kind of come up with an excuse with my mom of like, oh, my cycle's just like really irregular, so I need to go see a doctor and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then obviously once I was at the doctor by myself, I was just like, hey, you need to get back. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. there was definitely times I had to be sneaky, but... Um, obviously I got caught eventually. <laughs> you got caught? Yeah. Yep. What happened? What, uh, what was the aftermath of getting caught? Um, I, they have, they call them judicial committees where you meet with the elders of the congregation. And, um, I kind of lied <laughs> at the first one. It was like, oh yeah, we're not talking. Um, and those judicial committee meetings are like really, they take it too far because they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm allowed to say. <laughs> it's like any words are off. Um, oh, like, like, on, like right now on here? Yeah, like oh, you if you're live. Everyone. Oh, okay. Well, they would ask, um, too, they would get like too personal. They would be like, oh, did you orgasm? Like how many times did you orgasm? Like how often would you have sex? And like just the... They got really into it. Um, so I lied and they believed me. And then I got caught a second time, had another um, like judicial committee meeting. And that one I decided I was gonna leave. Um, and I was moving, I moved in with him and um, now I'm married to him. So it all turned out for the better. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you must be relieved that you don't have to fucking you know, tell a creepy old guy how many orgasms you had. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big relief, and it was it was really hard because once I because I left for him, and I knew when I left that I would lose like all my childhood friends, and because I I got disfellowshipped, so I was shunned by everybody, so mm -hmm. nobody's allowed to talk to me or anything, and I knew that, and that was fine. Um, but it was strange to 
slowly come to the realization that the religion I was born and raised in and believed in like so deeply was just so wrong. <laughs> You know, anyone who won't be friends with you because the sky tells them not to is is probably not even someone that you would really benefit from being friends with right. anyway. Yeah. No, yeah, you come to that realization, too, that, like, those people were never really your friends. Well, what'd you say your name was? Kayla. Well, Kayla, thank you for, for sharing that with us. I'm glad that uh, everything turned out pretty well for you. Thanks. Thank you for listening. Of course. You have a good rest of the night. You too. Bye. All from Vivian. Vivian. Vivian, are you there? Hi. Yeah. There. Have you ever played a game called Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door? No. No. Not at all. No. Vivian, how old are you? I'm 21. I'm going to be 21 in two days. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. There's... Oh, 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 there's... There's... There's a... Fuck. The, the, all right, there's a character in that video game that has the name Vivian, and I thought of it. What, are you excited uh, to turn 21? Uh, half and half. I mean, uh, it's kind of... It's kind of melodramatic in a sense, because everyone always makes it out to be this big deal, you know? And, uh... Any time that uh, people want to try to celebrate my birthday, uh, you know, before I've turned 21, obviously, everyone always tries to go out to a bar or whatever, knowing fully well that I can't drink. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to keep friends in a sense because of that, you know what I mean? And social media as well as like Facebook and Snapchat mentioning that it's the person's birthday. So it's like hard to weed out. Uh, who and what, you know what I mean? Mm. Do you feel... Are you a are you a birthday person? Do you like your birthday? Because some people... Because there's... I think there's a spectrum of, like, some people are like, it's my goddamn birth week. <laughs> we're doing... We're going all out. We're doing this. We're doing that. Then some people... I mean, they're almost anti their own birthday. They don't want anything. They don't want the singing... Don't talk to me. Don't write on my Facebook wall. Where do you fall on that on that spectrum? Well, um, I don't know. I personally, it's it's it's. I've grown to not really celebrate it because you know people always make it out to be a big deal, and I feel it's a little bit too egotistical for my liking. Hold on one sec. Can you guys hear Vivian? I'm so sorry. I'm always nervous that people can't hear the. Caller. No, that's all right. If you want me to come closer to the mic, I definitely can. Oh, if you could, that would be. Of that would course. Be fantastic. Hello, hi. <laughs> um, you know, Vivian, I have a question for you. Sure, Bill. Why? 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 Because it's given me enough grief in my lifetime, and. I say, why not live while you still have the opportunity and free will to? Mm. Why not, rather? Mm. Mm. I know that kind of almost bounces back on previous, you know, co uh, conversations had in this stream tonight, but, you know. Mm. <laughs> what is your why not? What is, the, what is your thing that you're going to do? Because why not? Pursue this career that I wanted to, you know, just Ooh. acting and business and a bunch of different things. I'm having difficulty deciding a lot of things right now and pinpointing that as well as like my birthday very soon. It's, it's hard to be able to go out with, you know, pandemic and everything that's going on right now, you know, panorama okay. as everyone calls Sorry, it. All right. So you, well, hold on, yeah. real, well, hold on, we'll stop real quick. All right. You said a career. <laughs> yes. Is it, and you, then you, you said, you said a career and then you named like 10 Things is there? <laughs> is it a particular thing that you're going after? Acting, but then I also wanted to have a backup. I'm currently pursuing my my bachelor's in business, you know, for marketing, and then I'm also looking at mm. UX design, which is uh, it designs the interface for apps and websites for different companies and whatnot. So I'd like to say I'm well-rounded. I was always brought up to be well-rounded and well-spoken. So um, you know, just. <laughs> trying to you know find where i belong right now it's, it's difficult <laughs> you know uh 
I, I talk I talk about this constantly because it's been such a fucking game changer for me, Vivian. Do you use TikTok? Yes, I do. Do you make TikToks? I used to. They're kind of funny, but I don't know. I just because if you're trying to get into it. like that's <laughs> if I if I wanted to go be an actor, it's the number one thing I would do is just make a bunch of TikToks. I feel like that's how like everyone's getting. Like famous now is 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 through uh, TikTok and like you know there's so much um, uh, there's so much you can do on there with that and with business too you know. Oh yeah, one hundred and ten percent. What's your what's your dream role, Vivian? Uh, I'd probably say Elphaba uh, from Wicked uh, on Broadway. Hopefully, I don't know. Uh, it also depends on what type of acting career I want. Whether I was told that I have to be defined as either a theater or a film actor so it's really difficult <laughs> uh to pick and choose but i have been told by others uh from my alma mater uh that i shouldn't uh be defined by that decision if you have to if you have to choose go with a film actor because it's way easier because you do it once and then it's mm -hmm. For for because you know right because for a theater actor every time you want someone to see it you have to do it yeah. Oh, yeah. But the film, you do it once, and then you show so you. Hey, I did it. I did it. And then you can show it to them. <laughs> the theater, you have to fucking do it every time someone watches it. Oh yeah. L listen, I completely understand. Like, I've been doing theater since I came. I came out of the womb tap dancing, so it's. I don't know. It's just. I'm used to doing all of this live, so film would be a harder, you know, way to adapt. You know, just trying to get around that. <laughs> Well, thank you for uh, for sharing yeah. with us, Vivian. Um, I hope course. you have a good Vivian. By the way, good act, good good actress name. Thank you. It's not my actual name, but yeah. <laughs> well, now you have a you got a good stage name for yourself. Thanks. Well, thank yeah, you for sharing, I'm Vivian. Sure. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Of course, definitely. It was great to talk to you too. All right, have a good one. You too. Good night. Call from Lyle. Lyle? Hello? How are you, no Lyle? No way. I'm good. Is that your real name? It actually is, and I wanted to ask you really quick if you were named after a family member like I was, because it's like an older, it was a popular name in like the 40s and shit. I think I was named after my like great aunt Libby or something. I don't know how they got to Libby from Lyle, but I mean I don't know how they got to Lyle from Libby, but right. that's what happened. And now I'm a, and now I'm talking to you. This is so cool. I'm so glad I finally got through. Good to talk to Thank you. Man. I mean it might not be. This might not go well. We don't know yet. You okay. might you might <laughs> hang out you might leave this feeling disappointed. I don't think if I don't I hope you don't. I don't want well, you to. Well I already to, met my goal. I, you like, should, like, that's I have not no my goal either. Henceforth. Okay, good. All right, if you have no expectations... Well, you said this is cool. Yeah. This is neat. That's, a, that's an expectation. Well, but I'm... Okay. That's, well, that's no, fair. okay, actually, no. I think that's more of an observation, because you're not... It's not an anti... You, you didn't say, I'm I think this will be cool. Like, you, you're you're observing, you feel already that this is cool. What? Because yeah. <laughs> I'm trying what to get through, want, Like, Lyle? I haven't tried that many times. I will... I already told you I just met my girl. I don't. So what do I want in general? Okay, let me think. Happiness. I think most people want happiness, but then that's like a loaded answer, right? How do you define happiness? I don't know. It's like well, it's like a. I guess what I mean by happiness is like a satisfaction with with life and a sense of place and I don't know uh, fulfillment How old are you, Lyle? 25 mm. Well, what, what, what's given you fulfillment in the past? Mm. Completing like projects and like set, setting goals and then give like actually succeeding in the goal that's always pretty satisfying definitely well what kind of projects have you uh completed oh god i don't know 
moved across the country. I had like that goal for a while and then I moved to another city on this new side of the country that I'm on. And uh, things seem to be going well. I was getting a little impatient with it when I first moved to this most recent city because I like, you know, it's just there's a lot of stuff that always comes with that, but a lot of hard changes, not knowing many people. But, you know, I'm starting to adjust and adapt, and I think adapting feels really good. It's a good definitely. It. There, there is a deep sense of accomplishment in being able to move to a, a brand new place and just be like, without knowing anyone or with only knowing a few people and just, you know, being able to just out of fucking nowhere forge your own life. Mm. Yeah. What have you what have you done to adapt? Especially I don't know if this was recent, but that's I I have no idea how I would do that in a coronavirus world. Oh god. So like I moved my initial like big move from Missouri to Washington state was before covid. That was like uh January or uh, June like 2019. So that was a little bit before. That was about a year before all the stuff. And then the most recent move was in COVID, and it was definitely a lot harder to find a job. So, yeah, working in the kitchen now. I was doing tree work before that. What is tree the work? Were you like making a cli- them, like climbing, climbing them? Yeah, climbing them to work on them, take out hazards. You can get paid to climb trees. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, it sounds like there is like research stuff where you do like mostly just climbing and like do like sampling of like a oh. dick, like drilling cores. But what I was doing was removing dead trees and shit. So you like climb with a chainsaw and like. How's like, your upper body rope. strength? You climb trees with a chainsaw? Yeah. That sounds very difficult. It was, <laughs> it was fucking dangerous. I don't do it anymore. I'm like kind of glad I'm not doing it anymore. But I might get back to You're not it doing it summer. anymore, too. I don't want you to get hurt. You sound like a nice guy. I don't want you to chop your fucking face off with a chainsaw. Yeah, we don't want to do that. That can happen. Well, Lyle. <laughs> I said, you, we have the same name. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Do You don't know any other Lyles. You don't know that many other Lyles, do you? I don't, I don't think I've ever met another Lyle in person. Either this is the closest I've gotten to meeting another Lyle, like the most of the connection. We got to do something. We got to put together like a group or something. I don't know what how we can a capitalize on this. A Lyle the Lyle. We could be the Lyles. <laughs> that would be, cool, be cool. All right, I'll text you. I'm going to subreddit. Cool. I love you, Lyle. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, look at you, man. You have a good night. You too. Bye. Lyle forever, baby. I said the name of the thing. Call from Lyle the Wildcat. To accept. Lyle the what? Lyle the Wildcat. Say this again. Oh, turn your stream off. Lyle the Wildcat. Lyle the Wildcat? Yes. What Lyle the Wildcat? What makes you a wildcat, Lyle? A lot of things. I'm a little wild. And I'm kind of like a cat. Lyle the Wildcat, you you know, for a wildcat, you have a very soft voice. I can't hear you very well. I'm sorry, you're on uh, speakerphone on my phone. Oh, and, t- take uh, me off a of speakerphone. This is a private conversation between you and me that no one else is allowed to listen to. This is terrific. When I found out your name was Lyle, I was like, "Hey, I got the same name." You got, no, you got there's no, there's uh, there's no, no, there's no way you also have the same name, Lyle, as the uh, other guy. Uh, how do you spell your name, Lyle? What? Uh, how do you spell your name, Lyle? How do I? How do you spell your, your name, Lyle? Come on. Everybody knows how to spell Lyle. Can anyone else hear this man and understand words that is coming out of his mouth? No one understands what I'm saying? Really? Really? 
Why? All right, Lyle, uh, you're having a, we're having a bit of technical issues here, and I, I also no I don't way. know I don't I don't really understand your vibes. No way, man! I've been calling you so many times. All right, now you I know, can hear you. You know what? You know what? I think what happened was you were doing a weird thing, and it may, I couldn't hear you. And now that I see, I, I'm gonna hang up on you. You're 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 oh. talking like a normal person. Oh man, Lyle, come on, dude. We're part All right, of now the I can Lyle hear you. group. No, you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Can, can, so can keep can you doing that. Fire? Keep talking like a normal person. <laughs> Was I talking like an alien person? I don't know. I don't know what this is. My man, it's a Lyle conversation. What do you want, Lyle the Wildcat? That's a good question. I guess I just want to calm down and not be so wild. That's not, yeah, that's pretty much. We'll take a breath. What do you think? Okay, okay. Taking a deep breath. You don't have to tell me, just do it. <laughs> okay. How do you feel? I, you, I, you were too busy just telling me that you were going to do it and then laughing when I said not tell me to do it. You didn't even do it. I did it. Of course I did. How do you feel? It feels good. I've no, been, you just I've did it just now. Out. I've been trying to reach out for you for a long time. I like I like your streaming. Thank you. I, think it's pretty I cool, appreciate man. that. Pretty Thank cool. You, Lyle. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you, Lyle. I appreciate that. Now, you asked how I spell my name? I'll tell you. No, I didn't L -Y. ask that. Oh, you oh, I guess you I, maybe did. I did. All right, how do you spell oh, it? I, I was kind of circling back to that, but... No, it's, no, no, I was wrong just now. I apologize. <sighs> okay. No worries, no worries. Um, but I'll let you lead the conversation. This, this is your show. So, go ahead, man. T tell me what's up. Thank you for calling, Lyle. I'll talk to you soon. No worries, man. Call from... Michael Bullshit. Michael Bullshit? Michael Bullshit. Michael Bullshit? Michael Bullshit? Oh, hello. Can you turn off your stream for me, please? I got you. Done. How are you doing, Michael Bullshit? Depends on the day. Today, I'm okay. How were you on Wednesday? On Wednesday was a very particular shitty day because I had a ice cap. It's a, it's a coffee drink from a Canadian company called Timmy's. And for 30 minutes, I was looking forward to drinking it in the morning. And I was getting pulled side by side by different staff at the hospital. And uh, I couldn't drink it. And then when I finally got to the boardroom to go and drink it, I dropped it. It spilled everywhere. So, that what, was a what is an day. ice cap composed of? It's essentially a slushy coffee. A slushy coffee, like a frappuccino. Kind of. But it's ice cap because it's Canadian. Do you live in Canada? I do. Oh, what's it like there? What's the hospital like? Well, um, I go all over the province. I work at every hospital. Uh, but they're pretty quiet during this time of the year. Not too many people are there. And Canada's not too bad. Uh, I would just say that people have a misconception about us being nice. And I would argue that we are not nice. We are assholes. But we are polite assholes. How do you... What is the difference between an asshole and a polite asshole? How can someone be polite about being an asshole? Let me think about that for a moment, because I do have an answer. Okay, we'll wait. We're not, I'm not busy. All right, fair enough. I would say that an asshole has a disregard for their feelings, but a polite asshole at least feels bad after, says sorry. Oh, you can okay, see there it in their eyes. And by the way, I was about to say they're regretful assholes, but there's a difference between feeling bad about what you did and regretting what you did. 
that's a good point. Perhaps the two can go hand in hand. I mean, sometimes I feel well. Bad, no, because if I, let's say it. that I'm an asshole to you, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel bad that I did it, but I had to do it. I don't regret it. I would do it again, but I feel bad doing it. Yeah, that's fair. I deserved it, but because you felt bad, you're a polite asshole. You're not just an asshole. I would say. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's true. I, that's a little bit of a cop out to me. Just because I feel bad about doing something doesn't mean it doesn't lessen the impact of what I did. Did I deserve it? Was I being an asshole to you first? Did you have to be an asshole back to me? Mm. When's the last time you were an asshole? Um. question I don't have a specific example but I don't remember off the top of my head but I'm a pretty nice guy <laughs> and and to a fault Canadian. to be honest I guess yeah what? yeah I'm, I'm nice to a fault sometimes I'm like a doormat and I let people walk all over interesting I feel like you do you secretly wish you were more of an asshole Michael bullshit I do, yes. Mm. But Can you? I know you were okay. I, so you were you had trouble coming up with a story or or an anecdote or or, or thinking about the last time in which you were an asshole. But mm-hmm. could you think of the last time in which you were walked over for being too nice? Absolutely. Uh, Tell a me. A few weeks ago, before I left my wife. Well, months actually. But I'm more free now. If that makes sense. You said a few weeks ago when you left your wife. Well, a few weeks ago I officially stopped talking, but a few months ago is when we separated. Oh, when you mean left, you mean like left. Yes. Was she walking over you? Oh, yeah. What was she doing? Uh, she didn't like when I got confident and I was doing something with my life. And she didn't. So she kind of put me down but as time went on I realized that you know it's not me who's the problem um, what she's saying and doing was really just a projection of her own reality and her own dream mm. and mm. so when I realized that it made me feel immune to the opinion of her and the actions mm. of her and I'm not the victim of needless suffering anymore so mm. I like that yes Yes, so yeah, I, you know, look, a lot of people, they fucking try to tell you how to live your life, how to do your thing, but it's projection of whatever they think of, you know, their life and their thing. Well, exactly, and honestly, in society today, I feel like people make assumptions too quickly, and they don't have the courage to ask questions and express what they really want anymore, and we should. Mm-hmm. We should communicate clearly to not just avoid misunderstandings, but sadness and drama, and and. And once people realize that, I feel like they can transform their life. Because your, what, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. what were you gonna say? I was oh, gonna oh, say let me ask like, you. Your wife. Sure. What was like? Can I get? Can I get any kind of like concrete example? Like, like, do you have an example of like something you did that she didn't like? Um. Yeah. Let me think about that. Uh. There were both legitimate things and non-legitimate things. So a legitimate thing would be me not like putting down the toilet seat. Um, the rest, honestly, it, it wasn't things I did. It, it was again her. It was it was her own insecurities, and she'd project what she thought was the truth. Like if if I came, you know, ten minutes late from work, I must have been up to something bad. So mm. I didn't really do anything. It was just more of walking on eggshells and not leaving when I. What I did was not leave sooner. That's what I did. She was she was insecure about you, you know. Yeah. Coming home late and stuff. I I guess and and so I stopped coming home late. I really do care about how people feel and so I don't want her to feel that way and so I transformed my whole life around making her happy and I lost who I was and I found myself being apologetic to people and you know ex- over explaining myself and not having that confidence anymore and so uh I just didn't like who I was becoming. Mm. Yeah, I like that. You know, look, that's a good uh, uh, that's a good lesson to learn. 
uh, you know, not mm -hmm. to fucking live your life for other people, even if they're, you know... Well, I mean, look, if there's someone that's close to you, it's like you shouldn't, they shouldn't, they shouldn't expect you to live your life for them. They should like you for the life that you live for yourself, you know? Um, yeah. I fuck with that. I think that's great, man. I'm glad to hear that you're, you know, uh, 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 living by the cut of your own sword these days. Go well, be mean, you. You, be mean to more people. Don't feel bad about it. It's, it's kind of, <laughs> it's fun. It's a good way to what? live, yeah. being mean to everyone. Confidence helps with that. And I just want to say something to the people in the chat. You guys, don't expect your life... Like you, Some people in the chat seem to think my life suddenly figured out, but it isn't. You're not going to change overnight and feel happy. Your changes are small increments. And stop trying to cut cold turkey your old life and start something fresh and new. Don't change anything about it. Keep doing whatever you're doing and just add something small to it that you can maintain for weeks on end. Add something of value and start there. Uh, someone else, someone else uh, in the chat um, wants you to uh, sort of to bring you back to earth. They want you to know to put the fucking seat down next time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I started to do that, and I now put good. on a towel before I exit the shower. I'm, I'm learning how to be a big boy. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that you, you know, ha haven't gotten too, uh, you know, into yourself. You got to humble yourself mm -hmm. sometimes. I'm, I'm trying. Well... Thank you, thank you for sharing that, man. I, I appreciate that. I love, I love, uh, I love the story. I love the 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 vibes. No, that was stupid. I, I don't know why I said that. That was a stupid thing to say. But I love the um, resilience. Not fucking living your life for other people. It's a good. It's a good message. Thank you. Appreciate it. What you say your name was? Michael bullshit. Uh, my, no, my actual. No, don't tell me. Don't tell me whatever the real ah. name is. I know it's not bullshit, but it's funnier to think it's bullshit. Thank you, Michael Bullshit. I'll talk to you soon. I love you. I love you too. Call from Drew. Drew. Oh hey. Uh, hey. Uh, how are you doing? Okay. Yeah. What? What? Uh, Drew, I have a question for you. Okay. Why? Yeah, it's all about the little things. The little things that provide joy, Gek. Tell me about these little things that provide you joy, Drew. Well, I've been. Uh... I've been refurbishing old video game consoles the past few weeks. It's been kind of fun. Like Fuck I got yeah. a... I like that. That's, that. that's a cute little side hustle you got there. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, it's pretty fun. What like what's I... what 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 makes the most money? What's what what is the highest margins? Oh, dude, I haven't even been selling them. Like I just had I I've just found them at Goodwill and I'm like it was a NES at Goodwill and then a PS2, and I was like, I'm just gonna take this. <laughs> so I so you got know it. how to like, t you know how to like rip shit apart and do the the, the science shit and make it into a real thing. Not vaguely. Like, you well, I mean, enough to do yeah. enough that it did the thing turns on. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the I just got this PS2 working today. Um, it just needed to be cleaned out. It was like stupid dusty in there. And uh, it works. It works right now. There was even a disc inside it when I bought it. And I was like, that's what was, pretty cool. What was the disc? Uh, let me check. Hey. All right, we'll wait. Uh, oh, I didn't like that. We'll wait a little uh, bit. Here we go. It's a uh, Battle Racing Ignited Burnout Revenge. <laughs> oh, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it's just a, uh, some racing game. I know that much. I don't have a working controller, so I can't really play it, but I have it. Well, look, I'm glad that this is uh, something you're enthusiastic about. Uh, but look, at a, at, a, at a you know, I know you're a holder, but at some point you got to sell. You got to sell these game consoles. You got to make a little bit of cash because it sounds like sounds like you've got some good skills going on here. I like I like it as a hustle, but <laughs> but I'm over. I'm trying to ruin you. Why, are you, why? You know what? No, don't take my advice. Don't monetize this hobby. Enjoy it because you're going to be dead. Enjoy the process of doing this. Don't listen to me. <laughs> don't never sell your NES. 
It's gonna be... It's all you. It's worth the little happiness uh, uh, jizz that you get um, <laughs> when you when you do it. What'd you say your name was? Uh, Drew. Well, thank you for calling in, Drew. I hope you have a, uh, 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 you know, as good of a rest of the evening as you possibly can. Yeah, you too. Good night. It happened now, but um, yeah. I don't. There's all sorts of like general bullshit of like you know follow. Oh, I don't know. What are your interests? I mean, I like marketing too. I like to be creative. Um, like I was at kind of a low point. Like I, back back in the, I like to drink, but now I just I don't drink anymore because it gets me nowhere and kind of in trouble. So I kind of had to find new interests and go back to what they were before. So I, I guess I'm still discovering that about myself now, getting in touch with what I liked before. Uh, you know the the party years and i got like hiking nature stuff like that but um yeah just trying to find something that works uh but i guess that's why i called you like you're saying 34 is not too old like you know i'm a single guy um you know i moved back home like with my family so i'm, I'm kind of feeling like the stigma there uh i don't know if that's like the right move i am saving money i, I heard a previous call you know you were talking that kid was 19 who was working at taco bell like that that was a good move, you know, when you're young, but am I, like, too old to be doing that shit? I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, look, is there a huge difference between... Do you do you consider there to be a giant difference between 34 and 36? No. All right, well, if you saved money for two years, how if you didn't spend it... If you lived at home with your parents and didn't save a dime, and you didn't spend a dime, you know, you'd probably save up a... a you would probably say yes to the question of, is there a big difference between the amount of money you would have now and the amount of money you would have then? Right. Um, you know, but I don't know. I don't have concrete advice because, um, like, definitely, you know, it's never been easier before because, I mean, there's all these tools on the internet to help you market with shit. TikTok is incredible and changes people's lives o overnight. Um, but... I don't know, man. My, my whole thing is I would just pursue whatever is most pressingly interesting to you right now and just give it a shot, not in the sense of, like, I have to choose one thing forever, but, <laughs> you know, I would just try whatever is currently the most interesting to you. And see if it works. And I yeah. apologize if you've talked about this before, but I'm no, just really curious apologize. about about your your background and, like, how you got started. Was was Therapy Gecko, was that a lightning idea? Did you plan this out? Was this, like, a dream? Like, how did that... How did this all start? Uh, I, I don't have a um, incredible story. For, I mean, it would take like it's really it was kind of the intersection of like fifty different things. But um, the, I I it was a lot of it was really Arpan. I don't know if you know what Arpan is. I'm no. on there right now. But um, Arpan. Uh, it's called the Reddit Public Access Network. I saw I start I started the Therapy Gecko just on uh, Reddit. Like okay. of eight months ago, just because I thought Reddit was a uh, Reddit streaming was was interesting, and I, I I had a gecko costume for an unrelated reason, <laughs> and um, I started streaming on there, and and I kept doing it, and now I'm here, and I, I also uh, agree with the sentiment of I did I did not think I would get this far, um, so I'm I'm just uh, keeping it moving, keeping it rolling. Well, you're doing a great talks. job. I, I mean, appreciate I appreciate that, you sharing that, you sharing the story. And uh, that's how I found you on TikTok. I, it was literally, you know, I scroll TikTok a lot these days, and you were the most creative uh, thing I stumbled across. And I'm just, it's, it's really awesome to be talking with you right now and to be part of your show. Well, I appreciate that. I know you're lying because you've seen all the people doing the I'm on a sugar crush, I got a pocket cash thing song. <laughs> um, so I'm not as good as those people, but... It's different, man. It's creative, and it's uh, it's cool just to vent, you know, just to chat. I think a lot of people are missing that connection right now, and uh, you know, just want to talk. So it's it's a great platform to do that. So, I mean, you're making me feel better. I'm not too old, uh, you know. And and I think of it as like, I guess, you know, I don't want to be all negative here. The silver lining is I got freedom. You know, there's a lot of opportunity oh, yeah. to. I don't feel trapped into doing any one thing, or you know, not having like a family or, or being stuck in a situation I don't want to be in. I definitely don't feel stuck, so I'm happy about that. 
Good. Well, thank thank you for calling in, man. I, I appreciate all the kind words, and I hope you have a good rest of the evening. Thanks, Gak. You too. Love your show. Thank you, man. You have a good night. Take care. Bye. Therapy Get goes on the line, taking your phone calls every night. Therapy Get goes to an right, teaching you how to live your life. But he's not really an expert.